They say better late than never, and we can definitely say this for the new EF Core 10 feature that gives us support for performing a left join and a right join natively in Link. I'm going to explore both of them in this video, so let's dive in. Let's remember what a left join is in SQL. So let's say this represents one of my tables. For example, it has four records. Let me color them. And let's say this is my products table. The corresponding table that I want to join to is going to be the reviews. So let's call this the products. And then we're also going to have the reviews. And I'm just going to color code the rows in the respective table. And let's say one of our products, for example, the first one has two reviews. Now notice that the fourth product colored in yellow does not have our respective review. So if we were to perform a left join, the resulting table will contain all the records from the left table together with all of the matching records from the right table. So we're basically going to get what we already had. And I added two red rows because we are matching two of them from the right hand table, the reviews. And notice that for the yellow row, we don't have a matching table in the reviews column. So in that case, the database will return null for that record. So this is just a quick visual example of what happens. Now, let me show you how we can do this with EF Core. So let me show you how we could do this with the current versions of EF Core. Of course, we had support for this previously. But the syntax was a bit cumbersome. So I'm going to call this endpoint left join old, and I'm going to say query syntax. Let's give this an HTTP get attribute. And the route is going to be, let's say left join old and query. And I'm just going to append query for query syntax. So my database context has two database sets, the products and the reviews. And I have a respective foreign key relationship between these tables in my database. So if I wanted to do a left join, let's say from the products to the reviews, we would get back all the products and then the matching reviews and the products that don't have a review will have null in the result set. So I call this the query syntax because that's what I want to write. So I'm going to start off by saying from p in db context product and then let's say i want to join this for example r in db context reviews and we want to match this on the product id property on the review i'm going to input this into an intermediate result representing my joined records and what we want to do is call default if empty on this review group so that we can then select this element and we're going to get back the value if it exists and null if it doesn't exist. Let's say I want to order this by the product ID and then the review ID, and then I'm going to apply a projection. And if I store this in a variable, this is going to be just my query. So this will be an I queryable, and then we can materialize this by calling something like tool list async. So I'm going to say query tool list async, of course, I have to await this. So let me say await, and then I'm going to say return, okay, and pass in the results. Of course, I also have to make this endpoint return a task so that it can be asynchronous. And this was the old way of how you could write a left join using the query syntax. To show you that this works, I'm going to just quickly start my application. And if I go ahead and send a request to my get endpoint, you can see we get a result back. There's this element in the response containing a keyboard that doesn't have a respective review. If I take a look at the distributed trace and specifically the query that was sent to the database, you can see that this is indeed a join selecting from the products table and then doing a left join on the reviews matching what we specified in our link query. Now we can definitely agree that this is a bit cumbersome, but if you know SQL, and you know it well, query syntax that we have here isn't all too complicated to wrap your head around. Now, while researching this video, I also found out that there's a way to specify this with method syntax. So I'm going to create a copy and show you this approach. So this is going to be left join old and let's call it method. And I'm going to replace query syntax with method syntax. So what changes here is how we define the query. I'm going to paste it in to just show you and I'll walk you through the individual steps. So we start off with a group join between the products and the reviews. We specify our key columns, the product ID and the review product ID. And the key is to get a subgroup for each product 
containing a list of reviews. Then we call default if empty on this subgroup, and then we can extract the individual values and also apply any sorting. This is functionally equivalent to the previous query, but just to be sure, let's go ahead and execute it. Back in the console, I'm going to replace this with method. We're going to call this and it looks like we get the same response back. If we examine the distributed trace, we can also see that the SQL is identical to the previous example. We still get a left join, but it's way more verbose than the query syntax in my opinion. So we finally get to the new syntax in .NET 10 and it's actually method based. So I'm going to copy this method and let's call this left join new method syntax. I'm going to say left join new in the route. And how this looks like is now I can just say left join on the products. I need to specify which table I'm joining to. These are going to be the reviews. Then I need to select the respective keys for my two tables. These are going to be the product ID and the review product ID. These are the columns that we're going to match. And then we need to provide a function that gives us the product and the review and we can apply a projection to what is the result that we're going to get back from the left join. Now I can also apply sorting operators so I can say order by the projection will be identical to what we had below and then after the left join we can also chain additional operators for example I can sort let's say by the product ID and then I want to sort by the review ID. So let me specify the review ID here. And we still get back an I queryable as a result of this. I'm going to remove the old syntax so that you can see everything nicely on the screen. So compare this syntax with EF Core 10 to what we had previously with method syntax and also the query syntax, which I showed you in the initial example. Now we can definitely agree that this is much simpler. I'm glad that we have a native left join operator. Just to be sure, let's go ahead and test it. In order to call this, I'm going to replace the route with left join new method. Let's execute it. And we get the same response back as before. As you might imagine, the distributed trace also gives us the same SQL. We have a left join between the products and the reviews, except the syntax is much cleaner. Now, if you're a fan of the query syntax, like I am, you're going to be disappointed to know that we still don't have a natively supported left join in query syntax. So doing something like this is not supported if you want to do a left join or a right join will have to fall back to method syntax. Now, depending on your preferences, this can be either good or bad. Personally, whenever I'm performing a left join, it's usually between more than one table. And for this, I find the query syntax to be easier to grasp because I can specify all the tables that I want to query. For example, like this, let's assume these are different tables. I have a clearer view of everything that I'm working with in the query, and then I can apply my filtering and my projections. With method syntax, this is quite a bit more cumbersome. I'd have to do method chaining between multiple tables, and this is probably going to look like a big mess in a complicated query. So I'm definitely looking forward to query syntax support for left join. Now, let me also show you what the right join looks like. Let's say we want to join between reviews and products and we want to do a right join, our key selector is going to be the review product ID, and our second key selector for the products table is going to be the product ID. And we're going to update these to be review and product. I'll keep the same projection and everything else, and I can update the route to be right join instead of left join. And let's go ahead and run this quickly. So in my CLI, I'm going to invoke right join new method, we get the same response back basically. And if I take a look at the distributed trace or specifically the SQL query sent to the database, then we have a select from the reviews table, a right join to the products table, and then everything else is much the same. To wrap up, here's one more bonus for the query syntax that I learned while researching this topic. I was always writing a left join like the example above. And you can get the same SQL with this example right here, which basically does a select many from the second table. And then EF Core figures out that it can translate this to a left join. Over to you. Let me know in the comments what you think about of the new left join and right join operators. 
Is it too little too late? And you think this feature is kind of half-baked without the built-in support for left join and right join in the query syntax. Also, people keep saying that EF Core is slow, but that's pretty far from the truth. And if you want to see how I optimize my database performance, I recommend that you check out this video next. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm if you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.